Inkwells and Curtains, a podcast about books and writing. Or perhaps books, but mostly writing. With added random noises. For creatives, storytellers, or anyone who likes holding a pen to paper. Sometimes. No, go and sit on your chair. There's not enough room for both of us on here. A question of identity. I have always held the old-fashioned opinion that the primary object of a work of fiction should be to tell a story. Wilkie Collins. And Dex moves slowly forward in a tunnel. He doesn't know which way to turn. And then... And then... Are you right in there? Yes, yes, I'll be out in a sec. I've just hit a brick wall. So we talked a bit about characters and building them, modifying them. And this can work when you're just beginning to flex your muscles, so to speak. It gives you the bare bones to build on. It gives you the bare bones to build on. And what will this one be, oh master? This one, my dear Igor, is going to be the arch villain. <laughs> and this one here, master? Oh, that's a reject. All he does is say his name and talk about the weather. Say hello to Igor, Derek. Hello, my name is Derek. Nice weather we're having, aren't we? Would you like some tea? I'll Hello. put him in with all the other rejects. Nice weather we're having, aren't we? Would you like some tea? Hello. Hello. My, my name, name is, is Dan. Hello. Nice, nice weather, weather we're having, having aren't we? My name is like like tea. tea. As you go on, you may find something is still missing. You reach a scene where you and your character don't know what to do, where to go, and this can last for hours, days, weeks. Sometimes you just have to go away for a bit and come back and suddenly realise exactly what's missing. Aha! The missing ingredient which nobody else must find out or we shall all perish! Well, perhaps not quite like that. But the professor does have a point. What about giving your character a secret which nobody else knows about? Such as a hidden flaw? Remember last time we mentioned a fearless hero gained empathy when we revealed that he is afraid of spiders? Because we can relate to that fear, or one similar, we can start to empathise with the character of the hero. He becomes that bit more believable. In the same way, it can be helpful, even necessary, to give your character a secret. It needn't be very sinister, just something they don't want everybody else to know about. It can be a phobia, like spiders. Or the inability to do something. A secret can affect a scene, a character, a whole plot line. Sometimes it is the plot. For example, a hidden or double identity. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Warning! Warning! Well, not really, as there isn't time, but... If you're looking for a novel of suspense and sensation filled with impressive characters, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins is a good place to start, and its plot does centre on a secret. One of the biggest secrets a human can feel threatened by, the secret of identity. And there are several identities caught up in here. This mystery novel is filled with the theme of identity, secret identity, lost identity, stolen identity. But the author himself can explain that. The central idea of the woman in white is the idea of a conspiracy in private life, in which circumstances are so handled as to rob a woman of her identity by confounding her with another woman, sufficiently like her in personal appearance to answer the wicked purpose. The destruction of her identity represents a first division of the story, and the recovery of her identity marks a second division. Wilkie Collins, How I Write My Books, related in a letter to a friend, 1887. But Wilkie Collins does more than engineer a complex plot. He is also a master of characterization. In this he equals Charles Dickens, his friend and mentor, who encouraged him in his early career. Introducing... Out for 
Moscou. He looks like a man who could tame anything. If he had married a tigress instead of a woman, he would have tamed the tigress. For example, he is immensely fat. He is a most remarkable likeness on a large scale of the great Napoleon. This striking resemblance certainly impressed me to begin with, but there is something in him besides the resemblance which has impressed me more. I think the influence I am now trying to find is in his eyes. They are the most unfathomable grey eyes I ever saw, and they have, at times, a cold, clear, beautiful, irresistible glitter in them, which forces me to look at him, and yet causes me sensations, when I do look, which I would rather not feel. The marked peculiarity which singles him out from the rank and file of humanity lies entirely, so far as I can tell at present, in the extraordinary expression and extraordinary power of his eyes. Fat as he is, and old as he is, his movements are astonishingly light and easy. He is as noiseless in a room as any of us women, and more than that, with all his look of unmistakable mental firmness and power, he is as nervously sensitive as the weakest of us. He starts at chance noises as inveterately as Laura herself. He winced and shuddered yesterday when Sir Percival beat one of the Spaniels, so that I felt ashamed of my own want of tenderness and sensibility by comparison with the Count. The relation of this last incident reminds me of one of his most curious peculiarities, which I have not yet mentioned. His extraordinary fondness for pet animals. Some of these he has left on the continent, but he has brought with him to this house a cockatoo, two canary birds, and a whole family of white mice. The cockatoo, a most vicious and treacherous bird towards everyone else, absolutely seems to love him. He has only to set the doors of the canaries' cages open and to call them, and the pretty little cleverly trained creatures perch fearlessly on his hand, mount his fat outstretched fingers one by one when he tells them to go upstairs, and sing together as if they would burst their throats with delight when they get to the top finger. His white mice live in a little pagoda of gaily painted wirework designed and made by himself. They are almost as tame as the canaries, and they are perpetually let out like the canaries. They crawl all over him, popping in and out of his waistcoats and sitting in couples, white as snow, on his capacious shoulders. He seems to be even fonder of his mice than of his other pets. Smiles at them and kisses them. Notice how Collins combines the elements, his resemblance to Napoleon, his sensitivity to sudden sounds, along with his enormous weight and his love of animals. Wookie Collins combines stealth with sensitivity and weight with brains. The Count has read books in every language, is at ease in the society of half the capital of Europe, and in addition is... one of the first experimental chemists living, and has discovered, among other wonderful inventions, a means of petrifying the body after death, so as to preserve it, as hard as marble, to the end of time. Here is a superman in criminality. He has brain, wit, knowledge, both literary and scientific, and a commanding presence. He can communicate with animals, and has a mesmeric influence on those around him. His magnetism attracts even Marianne Halcombe, a strong, fiercely independent woman, in spite of herself, and he has the power to control the husband of heiress Laura Fairley. Indirectly, he controls Laura too, who both fears and detests him. Interestingly, the one person he is unable to attract is Laura herself. Her sense of fidelity to truth, her belief in absolute honesty, act as a protective shield, and she is never taken in by him. She fears him, and is also able to see past the charm and genius to the cunning brain hiding behind. The Count also has his secret, which is discovered only towards the final chapters of the book, and it is the one single chink in his armour that finally overturns him. So here another secret impinges on the plot. The character's secret also adds another value, depth. Depth is a key ingredient to making your character believable, relatable, whether they're superheroes or Mike the struggling poet. It's all about layers. Not too many, at first. Three is the magic number, so maybe start with that. There's an outer layer, what the outside world sees of us. Meet every man, every man is. Open. Curious. Adventurous. Then there's the middle layer, perhaps the layer that our close friends and family are familiar with. A bit forgetful? Like strawberry vanilla ice cream. Irresponsible. And finally there's the inner layer. 
that only we know about. I'm a mess. I don't belong, and I hate strawberry vanilla. Hmm. Oh, um. I always knew that. Here's a fun thing to try out. Make a list of animals. Now, next to each animal, write down adjectives that describe them. Maybe one, maybe five. See what comes. In another list, write down famous historical characters. Next to these names, write down any characteristics you know or believe you know about them. Now, choose an animal from one list and a character from the other list. Look at the words you wrote beside each of them. Pull these words together, the animal, the character, the adjectives, characteristics, in one group. Let them simmer a bit. Now try describing or drawing this character using this lexicon. See where it takes you. You may find yourself moving off in a different direction. It may be you end up not using all of the words. No worries. These words are all just starting points. The main thing is you're creating a being unique to you and your voice. Let's have some quiet time while you do that. Finished? Or ready to carry on? If the character is taking over, talking and moving about, let them, go with them, let them tell their story. Underneath this new character, write down the question, what's their secret? Now put it away for a while and come back to it later. You may find you want to take some words out and add others in, that's all good. Try stuff out, keep your original handy to refer back to. You might like your second or third version best. Or you might go back to the original text and say, actually, this is how I want to say it. Your instinct, your subconscious, as well as your conscious, will all tell you which is the one to go with. Have you answered that question, what's their secret? Write that down as a footnote. It can come in handy later. There are some great books around on character development, whether you're just starting out in writing or have been writing for a while already, and a really cool and accessible one to look at is The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, which you can find for a reasonable price on Amazon. Vogler does a great job of explaining the most typical archetypes in storytelling. It is a very strong rule in drama, and in life, that people remain true to their basic natures. They change, and their change is essential for drama, but typically they only change a little, taking a single step towards integrating a forgotten or rejected quality into their natures. Christopher Vogler, The Writer's Journey, 1998. And let's close with some words from Wilkie Collins on his process for finding his characters for The Woman in White. My central idea suggests some of my chief characters. A clever devil must conduct a conspiracy. Male devil or female devil? The sort of wickedness wanted seems to be a man's wickedness. Perhaps a foreign man. Count Fosco faintly shows himself to me before I know his name. I let him wait and begin to think about the two women. They must be both innocent and both interesting. Lady Clyde dawns on me as one of the innocent victims. I try to discover the other and fail. I try what a walk will do for me and fail. I devote the evening to a new effort and fail. Experience tells me to take no more trouble about it and leave that other woman to come of her own accord. The next morning, before I have been awake in my bed for more than ten minutes, my perverse brain set to work without consulting me. Poor Anne Catherick comes into the room and says, Try me. So there you have it. He tries and tries and then leaves a character to come when they're ready. It worked for him. No reason why it can't work for you too. And he makes some interesting points about Count Fosco too. As an example of the gradual manner in which I reached the development of character, I may return for a moment to Fosco. The making him fat was an afterthought. 
His canaries and his white mice were found next, and the most valuable discovery of all, his admiration of Miss Alcombe, took its rise in the conviction that he would not be true to nature unless there was some weak point somewhere in his character. Wilkie Collins, How I Write My Books, 1887 And this weakness Collins also uses to his own advantage in developing the plot. If you want to know more about Wilkie Collins, hop over to our bonus content, which would take a brief look at his life and includes a short story by him. And now... Can you save a word? This is the corner for words that are rare, unusual, fun and possibly in danger of vanishing altogether. A few years ago, a couple of English students paired up on a blog called The Feather and Rose for a year and set a weekly writing challenge. They would pick out an old word falling out of use and the challenge was to write a piece of flash fiction using that word. The blog sadly is no longer around, but in homage to them, because we think it's cool to revive the tradition, we're going to set a similar challenge for anyone who fancies picking up a pen and scribbling something for fun. So the word for this week is... Philippendulous. Philippendulous, hanging by a thread. Example. Not for the first time, Jack the Mac wished he had come better prepared. Dastardly Dan cackled overhead. At last, the famous Jack the Mac is in my clutches, no more interfering with my plans. It will be a long drop to the bottom. Dastardly Dan took a step closer to the edge to gloat further at hapless Jack, swinging from the branch his parachute had caught on, his life filipendulous and about to be cut short as Dan reached down with his cutlass. And just maybe I will write a sequel. That got quite exciting there. So there you have it, a short scene, paragraph, sentence using the word filipendulous. See where it takes you. It might give you an idea for something. Bigger. Want to share it on your blog or podcast? Send us the link. Want to hear it read out with the sound effects? Let us know. DM us at Inkwells and Curtains on Instagram. Next time, we'll be looking at the character and their layers. Until then, have fun creating. There's no good complaining to me. You drank all the milk, didn't you? No, we'll just have to go out and do some shopping now. You have been listening to A Question of Identity, a podcast with random thoughts on books, authors and writing. This was an Inkwells and Curtains production.